What is going on everybody? Welcome to a new section on the machine learning with Python tutorial series. This section we're going to be talking about classification and a handful of methods for classification. So uh, as we dive in, the first uh, classification algorithm that we're going to be covering is k nearest neighbors. And but really all classification algorithms boil down to the same thing. So if you recall with linear regression, the objective was to create a model that best fits our data. And with classification, the general purpose is to create a model that best divides or separates our data. So uh, let's go ahead and show a quick example. So let's say you've got a graph. And then on that graph, you've got some data points like these. And the objective is to figure out uh, how to separate these into obvious groups. Uh, and even just looking at this intuitively, you could see that there are two groups here. One group is this group and one group is this group, right? You just know that's the case. So what we just did just now is actually uh, clustering, right? Like with our mind there, when we were just looking at this and we decided that these were two groups, we actually did clustering. Classification is actually even more simple than what we just did here. So what, what classification is going to do is the following. So with classification, you're going to have a data set that looks um, more like this, where you've got a group that you know are pluses and a group that you know are minuses. And the objective is uh, to create some sort of model that fits both of these groups, right, that, that properly divides them. So almost like some sort of model that defines the pluses and some sort of model that defines the minuses. So what if you had an unknown uh, dot somewhere? Right, like what if you have a data point that's like here? Looking at that just visually, which group would you assign that to? Would you put it with the minus, the blue minuses or the green uh, pluses? Most likely, you would put it with the green green pluses. And then I ask you, why, why would you have done that? Right, like what what made you think that that was the case? So think about that. And then what if we had um, a point over here? Where would you assign that point? Well, in this case, most likely the blue minuses. Um, and again, think about why might you choose that? And then finally, what if we had a point maybe uh, right here in the middle, almost? Now, how would you classify that? And it turns out the way that you would classify that might actually vary depending on the algorithm that you're using. But in most cases, I think that if you have a dot like, um, like this one, you're going to classify that based on proximity to the other points. I think most people, uh, when looking at a graph like this, would, would go based on proximity than anything else. So you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, this, this point is closest to this point for sure, this point, and this point. And, and what you're doing when you think of that, because those three points are much closer than the closest blue minus, which is all the way here, right? That's pretty far. So what are you doing when you do that? Well, it turns out what you've just done is nearest neighbors. So uh, with nearest neighbors, you are uh, just checking to see basically who are the closest points to this new po new new point on the data. In this case, we've got two dimensional data, but you can have three dimensional, ten dimensional, and so on. So obviously, visually for you, looking at this is super simple. But what if you had yeah, like ten dimensions or a thousand dimensions? Um, suddenly, you can't do this by eye anymore, and that's where the machine begins to shine. So that's nearest neighbors, but this is actually um, most people use k nearest neighbors. So what the heck is k nearest neighbors? Well, it turns out that if you just try to start thinking about, OK, how is this process actually going to work? Um, do you actually need to compare it to every single point in a data set to get your answer? And most likely, you don't need to do that. But so with k nearest neighbors, we'll just add a k, I suppose, here. But that's all together, right? k nearest neighbors. Um, you decide what the number of k is going to be. So let's say uh, k was equal to 2. What you would do is you would find the two closest neighbors to k. 
and I'm gonna say visually that is this one and honestly I'm not really sure uh, which one is closer of these two I would probably guess uh, Maybe this one. My orange line is definitely shorter, but, <laughs> but it doesn't quite go the whole distance. But let's just say it was closest to that second one there. So with K2, you've got two points that are the closest. So we've got basically two points are saying, yep, this is a plus. But what if you had a point that was maybe here? You might have a, a case where what are the two closest uh, points by K2? Well, uh, you would have probably this point here and this point here, right? Those are the two closest points. And when K, you know, with the, when the nearest neighbors go to basically place a vote on the, what the identity of this point is, uh, we have a split vote. Okay, so in general, when you do K nearest neighbors, you're probably not going to want to have K equals 2 or any other even number. You're going to want K equal to some odd number. In this case, we'll do 3. So what if we did three? What if we said, okay, we need one more point? Well, we would say, okay, it's this one. So then basically the vote would be um, negative, negative, and positive. That's a two out of three. So we would say it's the class is actually a negative class. That's what we would end up going with here. And so that's basically how K nearest neighbors works. Uh, it's, it's a super simple algorithm and the other thing you have to think about too is in this case we had only two groups but what if you had three groups is k3 going to be a, a a good idea turns out no because you could have a total split amongst all the groups what about four no because you could have a totally even vote so f if you had three groups you need at least five total uh you know, k equals five to avoid any sort of split vote. You can also code something in to just randomly pick if there is a, a division. What's neat about k nearest neighbors though, is not only can you get a, an actual uh, classification for uh, the data point that you pick, you can get what we were talking about before, both accuracy in the model so that you can train and test the model for the model's overall accuracy, but each point can also have a degree of confidence. So for example, what if you get, you, you're using k equals 3, and you get a vote that is like a, a negative, negative, and a positive. Well, that's a 2 out of 3, right? So that's a, you know, 66% confidence in the score, or in the, in the classification of that data. But not only is it 66% um is the confidence 66%, but you can also have the entire K nearest neighbors model that you've trained, you can have that accuracy. So this would actually be more like confidence. And that's why I wanted to change uh, when we were doing linear regression, why I didn't want to call it confidence, I wanted to call it accuracy because confidence with K nearest neighbors is something you can actually value and it can indeed be very different from the entire model's actual accuracy. So, um, so that's kind of cool with, with uh, K nearest neighbors. Now, what are some downfalls of K nearest neighbors? Well, as we're going to see, uh, in order to find out who are the closest neighbors, what we're using to measure that distance is just simple Euclidean distance is what we're going to be using here. And to, to do that, to find the Euclidean distance, uh, the most simple method is actually to, to, to measure the distance between any uh, given point and all of the other points. And then you just say, okay, what are the closest three or whatever K is. And as you might guess on a huge data set, that's a very, very long and tedious operation. There are a few things that you can do to kind of speed it up, but no matter what you do to speed this up, you're going to find that the larger the data set, the worse this algorithm runs because it's just not, not as um, efficient as other algorithms. And then, and so once we cover this and then we get into maybe like the support vector machine, you'll see that the support vector machine is much more efficient when it comes to actual uh, classification. Also with K nearest neighbors, um, you're basically, there's never really a point where you're totally training anything. Like the training and testing is basically the same, the same spot or the same, basically the same thing. Because when you go to actually test, you're comparing it to all the points. There's really no good way to, to train a simple K nearest neighbors algorithm. 
Um, there are also some things that we can do down the line, but we probably won't be getting into that ourselves. But anyway, just keep in mind that the scaling is not so good, and we'll point out exactly why. And then when we get into support vector machines, you'll see why support vector machines scale so much better than k-nearest neighbors. That said, I don't mean to, 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 to rag on k-nearest neighbors too much. It's actually a more than fine algorithm for many classification tasks. So if you're even if you're working up to maybe a gigabyte worth of data, k-nearest neighbors can still be calculated quite fast, and it can also be easily calculated in parallel, since any, any point you're trying to predict can be calculated um, regardless of the other points that you're trying to calculate. So it's actually... Um, you can you can thread it and uh, still scale relatively well, but if you're working with, you know, billions of data points, uh, it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna do you very well. So, anyways, um, that is the theory and intuition behind k nearest neighbors, and now we're gonna actually be diving in uh, to a real world example of k nearest neighbors, and then after that, we'll actually write our own k nearest neighbors algorithm. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.